All right. Well, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you happen to be in the world uh, currently joining us. Uh, this is uh, Adding Style with CSS Jumpstart. Uh, I am uh, Christopher Harrison, and uh, I'm uh, joined today by uh, Helen Zhang. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about what we're going to talk about. Uh, so we've got uh, six modules today, uh, and uh, module one is sort of the ubiquitous getting started with CSS, where we want to talk about what CSS is, the basics of how to apply it, how to bring in external style sheets, and so forth. And then that'll lead us very naturally into module two, where we're going to take a look at how to identify uh, individual elements or individual uh, blocks of of, uh, of elements. So what do you say we uh, actually get started? Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at CSS. There's the camera that I want. Let's take a look at, uh, at CSS, and now he takes it away, and uh, talk about exactly what CSS <laughs> is, uh, is all about here. Uh, so we're going to start off with kind of what CSS, why you want to use CSS, um, what, uh, what's important about it. And then we'll roll on into uh, element selection. We'll actually spend a lot of time uh, today, both in this module and in the next module, talking about how to identify uh, individual elements, how to identify types of elements, how to identify elements based on their state, where they happen to be, and so forth. So that way I can say, hey, this is how I want you to display. This is where I want you to display. Maybe I don't want you to display. Things like that. So we'll go in and take a look at, uh, at all of that. We'll take a look at the different ways that we can actually apply CSS to a page, and that will actually lead us perfectly into CSS inheritance. Now, chances are you've checked out another MVA, and one of the things that you've probably picked up about MVA in general is that MVAs do tend to be demo heavy. Today's not going to be an exception to that. We are going to have an awful lot of demos because you're a developer, right? Yes. And I'm a developer, and you're all developers. And one of the big things about being developers, we need to see it. Yeah. You know, you need to actually see how it works. So there is going to be a lot of demos. The one little catch that we're going to have a bit this morning is there's a little bit of groundwork that we need to lay out first before we can get to a demo. So if you're sitting there and you're watching and you're going, hey, can, can we see a demo? Trust me. There's going to be plenty of demos. We'll get there. It's just going to take a couple of minutes to kind of roll through a little bit of background stuff first. So cool. Well, let's get in and take a look then at what CSS is all about. So CSS, of course, stands for cascading style sheets. All right. Well, the cascading part we'll talk about in a few minutes. Let's focus in on the style sheet part for right now. The style sheet part is, this is a language that we can use now to lay out whatever it is that we might want. And of course, the most natural coupling is with HTML. Now, you might be wondering, all right, well, wait a minute, Christopher. I could actually fire up HTML, and, and I could actually just say something like this, that maybe, uh, do, 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 do. actually, apparently, I'm going to do it this way, because I don't have Zoom started yet, but that's OK. So maybe I could go in, and I could say bold, and I could say hello, like that, and I could close off my bold tag like that. Well, that's style, right? Yeah, I mean, it'll make the hello bold. It'll make the hello bold, but is that a really good way to do things? Uh, not if you want to, for instance, repeat this or you know, apply to a couple of different elements. Absolutely. Or if you want to change it, even. Yeah, that's exactly it. Because what we've now said is that hello has to be bold. That's it. And, and so the first big problem is, what happens if you want to change that? Or what happens if you want to be able to change that based on the device? So maybe I want that to be bold on a, a mobile phone, but I don't want that to be bold on a desktop. Or maybe I don't want that to be bold when it's printed out. Well, I've said, this is going to be bold. That's it, period, end of discussion. There's nothing else that that's going to be but bold. The other big problem that I have is, have I told you anything else about this little hello. Do you know anything else about that hello? Nothing. Nothing. You know that it's going to be bold, and that's it. Yeah. Is that a title? Is that a greeting? Is that a header for an article? Yeah, I kind of think it's important, but even that, I mean, I'm not sure. Exactly. And that's the problem. So you don't know if it's, if it's important or not. I don't know if it's important or not. The browser isn't going to know if it's important. A screen reader isn't going to know it's important. And a search engine 
isn't going to know it's important. That obviously a lot of time is spent on SEO search engine optimization, and SEO is extremely important. And one of the things that I always try to highlight is if you're doing good things, that's going to naturally start to move your page up. You know, a lot of people spend time focused in on performance, and, and performance is important. But really, if you write good code first, you're going to find more often than not that the good code is the best performant code. So if you just focus in on, hey, how can we make this code work really, really uh, well, read really well, that's, generally speaking, automatically going to be the fastest way to write it. Same exact thing when you're talking about search engine optimization, is that if you design your pages well, they're typically going to be optimized in search engines. Why? Because the search engine is going to understand what that page is about. So if I can tell a search engine, hey, that's a header, it now has more information that it can operate on, and it has a better understanding of where to put that page in regards to or in relation to other pages for particular queries. So not only do we want to focus in on this is how we want to display it, but we also want to focus in on exactly what that information is. And that's where that separation of concern comes into play. So rather than just simply saying, hey, we want this to be bold, let's let HTML put together the structure of the document. So let's let HTML tell us this is what the head is. This is what the article is. This is what the section is. This is where our navigation is. Let HTML do things like that. And then let's let something else handle the logic. That's, of course, going to be JavaScript. And let's let something else handle the formatting and display. And that's where CSS is going to come into play. That nice, clean separation of concern. So rather than going in and having a bold here, maybe we go in and we use a header tag. Or maybe we go in and we do um, an H1 tag. And I understand that H1, of course, is going to give you formatting. But H1 is still going to be understood as that's a header. And we can, of course, take that with style and adjust that. Yeah. So yeah, so focus our HTML on describing our data, focus our CSS then on how we want to display that data. And that's why CSS is important. All right, now let's talk a little bit about the basics. Now, the nice part about CSS in general is it is a relatively easy language to understand, I would say. Um, that you're going to notice that it's really broken down into two basic sections. That we've got selectors, and then we're going to have the key value pairs. So our selectors are basically, what do we want to apply this to? And so this could be an individual element. This could be groups of elements. This could be elements uh, of a particular type. This could be elements in different locations. But it's, what do we want to apply this to? Then it's going to be, what property do we want to set and to what value do we want to set it to? So now that we've figured out, oh, OK, this is what we want to focus our attention on. This is what we want to manipulate. The next question then becomes, well, what do we want to Excuse me, what do we want to manipulate on that? Exactly how do we want to make that look? Do we want to move it somewhere else? Do we want to make it bold? Do we want to change the color? Things like that. So that's the basics of our CSS syntax. And the thing that you're going to notice is that this syntax is going to be true pretty much universally. So regardless of where it is that you happen to be applying this CSS, so if you put it into a section on a page, which we're going to take a look at, if you put it into an external file, it's still always going to be the exact same. The only place where you're not going to have a selector, which we'll see in a, in a couple of minutes, is if we, on an element, happen to say style equals so we're not going to have a selector there, because it's going to be on that particular element. Instead, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our property value pairs and put those into there. 